This is milk from a cow. Every morning, I add it to my cereals and my coffee. In some Western countries, dairy products such as milk or cheese are a fundamental part of a healthy breakfast. However, in many East Asian countries, dairy products are not frequently used. And the reason is quite simple. A majority of people are lactose intolerant once they reach adolescence. For example, it is often stated that over 90% of Chinese adults are not able to properly digest lactose. In contrast, over 90% of people in Scandinavian countries do not have any issues in this regard. But why is it so? Well, this is an interesting story including blood first and spectacular mutations. My name is Kevin Steinig and today we talk about why lactose tolerance became prominent in certain populations. But as always, first some basics about lactose and lactose intolerance. Lactose is a disaccharide which is mainly present in mammalian milk. After eating or drinking a dairy product, lactose is broken down into glucose and galactose which are then absorbed into the bloodstream. Broadly speaking, lactose intolerance or hypolactasia is the inability to break down lactose. This condition is characterized by a variety of symptoms including abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea or vomiting. Abdominal pain and bloating are both caused by colonic fermentation. Since the gut itself is not able to break down lactose, different bacteria start to metabolize it. This leads to the production of methane, carbon dioxide or short-chain fatty acids and as a consequence, further electrolytes and water is secreted by the epithelium, which then leads to diarrhea. We can distinguish between three types of hypolactasia, primary, secondary and congenital. In a majority of cases, people suffer from primary hypolactasia. In these cases, they are able to digest lactose as children, but lose the ability once they reach adolescence. Secondary hypolactasia is found in adults, which would normally be lactose tolerant. Here, a gastrointestinal illness leads to damages in the intestine, which then leads to the inability to break down lactose. This condition, however, is usually reversible and people become lactose tolerant again. Lastly, congenital lactose intolerance is a very rare genetic disease in which newborns are also not able to break down lactose. There are just a few reports of this disease and the only current treatment is the complete avoidance of lactose right from birth. Okay, so let's take a closer look on how we can break down lactose in the gut. Since lactose is a major component of human breast milk, most people are usually able to digest it upon birth. We can break down lactose in a process called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is mainly performed by an enzyme called lactase, which is found on the epithelium of the gut. Lactase activity can be detected early on in the development of embryos and it peaks upon birth. What we now can observe in humans is that the activity of lactase starts to decrease within the first few months of life. In lactose intolerant people, however, lactase activity completely diminishes upon adolescence. To give an example, people of Chinese or Japanese descent lose 80 to 90% of their lactase activity within the first few years. In certain human populations, however, the activity of lactase stays quite constant throughout life. We can mainly observe this in people of Northern European descent, but why is it so? For very extensive studies, so-called gain-of-function mutations have been identified in these people. Gain-of-function mutation means that through small changes in the DNA sequence of these people, they acquire new, unique, beneficial characteristics, meaning in this case the ability to digest lactose. It might now seem obvious that these gain-of-function mutations have been identified within the gene which produces lactase. However, this is wrong. Indeed, the two major mutations have been identified 14,000 or 22,000 nucleotides away from the gene. In the first case, only one cytosine is replaced with a thiamine, and in the latter case, only one guanine is exchanged with an adenine. We often call such mutations single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs since they only involve one nucleotide and they are very abundant in certain populations. Okay, what are the exact effects of these mutations? Although this might sound a bit weird, but these small changes lead to new interactions between the lactase gene and proteins which can activate its activity. Since these proteins are produced all the time, they now lead to the production of lactase throughout life. It is quite funny, but since humans have been originally lactose intolerant, we say that lactose tolerant people are the mutants. Oh, and at this point we should also note that not only these SNPs, but also further nutritional and genetic factors influence lactose tolerance. 
Okay, so now we know how lactose tolerance works, but when and why did this happen? Lactose tolerance developed about 10,000 years ago and relates geographically to the introduction of dairy farming. In the perspective of evolution, this is a very short period of time. However, these mutations enabled an enormous selective advantage during famines. While other people relied on the regular consumption of animal blood, these novel mutants had now a new energy source. And as a consequence, this mutation spread quickly in Europe. Okay, so we have now defined lactose intolerance and we've seen why, how and when it developed. But we on this channel are interested in finding cures and treatments. So can we treat lactose intolerance? Of course, the first way to alleviate the symptoms of lactose intolerance is the avoidance of dairy products. It is quite surprising, but most scientists do actually not recommend to completely give up dairy products. Instead, you should include small dosages of dairy products in your diet. In this way, you can actually become more lactose tolerant over time. So now it becomes interesting. We could try to use exogenous enzymes or probiotics. As we now know, a lack of intact lactase is the major reason for lactose intolerance. So why not add lactase to dairy products? In this case, we can simply put lactase into small tablets or yogurt. The consumption of these vehicles would then result in the presence of lactase in the gut of the patient, which would then break down lactase. As a consequence, the symptoms of lactose intolerance should be alleviated over time. Although this approach is quite smart, it is rather ineffective. Most studies involving these kind of treatments do not show any significant improvements in lactose digestion. One exception, however, is a study which has been published in 2015. Here, combinations of lactase with freeze-dried yogurt slightly alleviated the symptoms of patients. As always, more studies have to be conducted to improve this outcome. Another approach involves the usage of probiotics. We've all heard about probiotics in commercials. They're defined as being compounds in food that stimulate the growth or the activity of beneficial microorganisms in the gut. Probiotics can be administered naturally as a part of dairy products. Since the main symptoms of lactose intolerance arise due to excessive amounts of lactose in the gut, we can try to foster the development and the growth of bacteria which can efficiently break down the disaccharide. And it has actually been found that probiotic bacteria can actually alleviate abdominal pain in patients. Although it is quite difficult to study the direct effects of probiotics on lactose intolerance, a systematic review which investigated different trials has found an overall positive effect of such treatments. So, this is it for today, but before we stop, I want to give a quick shout out to a friend of mine, Biomedmaster. If you plan a PhD in life sciences or you're generally interested in the life of a scientist, make sure to check out his channel. He has great videos and great vlogs which are very funny and engaging. So if you're interested in these or similar topics, let me know in the comment section and leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the greatest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya. Thank you.